Good afternoon boys and girls and thank you for joining with us for our online Sunday school. This is going to be our very last online Sunday school for this term. You're off on your summer holidays from school, we're off on holiday from Sunday school as well. And this will be our last one this side of the summer holidays. I hope you've enjoyed joining us for the Sunday School. We even really enjoyed making the Sunday School. It's been great listening to these stories and these songs as well and doing these memory verses. We've had a great time doing it. And all the team who have worked in behind the scenes as well, we are all thankful that you've been joining with us each week to listen to our online Sunday School. And as we said last week, hopefully when we come back again in September time, um, we'll all be back in the hall where we can gather together and we can give out sweeties and prizes and all the fun things we used to do before COVID took over in our world. So, what we're going to do then for today is we're going to move on to our very first chorus, our very first song. It's one of those ones that we've been remembering, one of those ones that we've practised and it's Jesus is the only way to heaven. Enjoy this song. first time boys and girls I wonder how good has your memory been over the last year or so just over a year when we've been doing all these memory verses now we've done various different things we did artist videos to help us learn some of them we did various other different videos to show or some songs to remember them and we've done lots of memory verses I hope you've been able to memorize these memory verses it's important for us to remember not just the words that we say as the Sunday school teachers, but what the Bible says, because that's really where all our stuff comes from. It comes from the Bible. Well, I wondered, can you remember last week's verse? Last week's verse was found in Psalm 118 and verse 8. And it was all about talking about the Lord and mankind. Can you remember? 
Well, here is the memory verse that we learned last week. And it's the same one for this week because it's applicable to our story as well when we get to our story for this week. And it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 118 verse 8. Let's do that again. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. You know, we think we're good at doing things. But nobody's as good at doing things as God is. And we'll find out very, very much so in our story today because in our story there's a man who thought he would do what he wanted but God told him to do something entirely different and he got a shock because he didn't think it would work. But when he put his confidence in God, when he trusted in God, God made the difference. Not what he thought he could do but what God could do. Let's see if you can memorise that verse once more. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 118 verse number 8. Here's another song that we've all liked. It's Every Buggy. Yep, that's right, you heard me. It's Every Buggy Needs Jesus. Enjoy. Don't mean to bug you. Boys and girls, it's time for our story. Have a shuffle if you're sitting or get yourself comfortable if you're standing. Today's story is about another hero from the Bible. We've been looking at various hero characters from the Bible and we've gone through right from the Old Testament all the way through in the uh, in the Old Testament looking at various individuals who have, well, they've, they've done what God asked them, maybe not the first time, but afterwards, after God's dealt with them or spoken to them, they've ended up doing 
God's work. Well, today we're going to think about another man and he is tasked with building an army. But his army isn't a big army. And that sounds a bit strange because he's going to fight a huge army. Well, today's story is about a man called Gideon. Have a listen to this story and enjoy. Slapstick Theatre Gideon's 300 Men This is Gideon, hey. who was a judge of Israel. In the time when Gideon lived, a group of people called the Midianites were taking over the Israelites' land. Get out of here! And the Israelites were starving. Yeah. So the Israelites asked God for help. God chose Gideon to rescue the Israelites and gave him the power to lead an army of Israelites. One day, Gideon and his army got up early and came close to the Midianite camp. God told Gideon that he had too many warriors with him. Really? So God told Gideon to let all the men who were scared go home. All right, uh, you can go home. Phew. So 22,000 men went home, and Gideon was left with only 10,000. But God told Gideon that he still had too many men with him. Uh, what, really? He told Gideon to bring the men down to the water and that God would give them a test. Okay. Gideon did as God asked, and then God said, divide the men in two groups. In one group, put all those who cup water in their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. In the other group, put those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. Only 300 men drank from their hands. God told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So Gideon did as God said. You can go home. That night, God told Gideon to get up and go down to the camp to listen to what the Midianites were saying. Hey, Pura, let's go! Gideon and his servant Pura went down to the camp and saw the huge army. There were too many men and camels for Gideon to even count. Oh, that's a lot of camels. But Gideon heard a soldier telling another man about a dream he had that showed them that God would give Gideon victory over the Midianites. When Gideon heard this, he worshipped God. Come on! Then Gideon and his army of 300 men went down to the Midianite camp. They blew their horns and held torches in their hands. They yelled out and the Midianite soldiers rushed around in a panic and tried to escape. Then God caused the Midianites to start fighting against each other. Because of God's power, Gideon and his army had victory over the Midianites that day. What a great story that is about Gideon. And if you were asked to go and build an army to fight a bigger army, I'm sure you would have done the same as what Gideon did. Gideon rounded up so many men to start with, thinking that he would need more men, or the more men he would have, the better chance he would have of winning the battle and winning the fight against the enemy. But when God started whittling down his army and started sending people home and, and sending this one home and that one home, uh, and eventually the army came down to th just 300 men, I wonder what was going through Gideon's head. Was he wondering, is God real? Is he serious? Uh, 300 men? I have to fight the army of the Midianites with just 300 men? But you know, if you think back to what our memory verse was saying, our memory verse said that we were to have confidence or we were to trust in the Lord rather than have confidence in man. So Gideon could have gone with these thousands of men and, and he probably wouldn't have won the battle, but instead he trusted in God. And with these 300 men, he was able to overcome and fight against the Midianites and release and free the children of Israel from the enemy that had sieged them for years. Again, Gideon trusted in God. And the Bible tells us that if we trust in God, God will forgive us our sin and he will take away our sin and we can get right with God. But we need to trust in God. It's not about how good things we can do. It's not about the best efforts that we can do. 
The work has already been done by the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross at Calvary and all we have to do is trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and we can know our sins forgiven. Well, what a great story we have then of Gideon. And I love that story of Gideon. It's, it's a great thing, a great story to learn about how Gideon had to trust in God. Well, our next song is all about amazing love because that's why God sent his son into the world because he loved the world and you and I are those who are loved by God as well. Here's a song, This Is Amazing Love.
Well boys and girls, it's now time for our craft. Before we move on to this week's, how did you go on with last week's craft? Last week you had to make a whale or a fish, and you had water spouts, a flappy tail, eyes, teeth, and other decorations if you wanted, but more importantly you had a Jonah inside. Well, here's some fish, some whales, some other fish that you can maybe see, and maybe yours was something like that as well. Well, we've got a new craft for today and it's all about the story of Gideon. And Nui's going to tell us what craft supplies we need and she's going to tell us how to make our craft for this week as well. So listen carefully and follow along with the instructions that Nui gives us. Hi boys and girls, so today we're going to do a quick and um, really easy Gideon's torch. All we're going to need is a bit of plain card, any colour of card. Um, some tissue paper for some fire so we've got orange we've got yellow and we've got red here and all we're going to need is a glue stick and some cellar tape so all we're going to do is take your bit of card and roll it up at the bottom so that it's tighter at the bottom than it is at the top and we're going to put a bit of sellotape over that to keep it in place. And there is your torch. All we're going to do is put, cut up some fire. You can use card if you want, or paper, orange, yellow, and red. Sellotape or glue little bits onto here so that it looks like fire. So here is our finished torch, dead easy, you can colour this in, you can decorate it, um, please send your pictures in and have a lovely summer! Great effort there from Naomi, thank you and we look forward to seeing your Gideon's Torches. We've got another great song that we've loved as we've gone through our online Sunday School and hope you enjoy it now too.
Well, boys and girls, we've come to the very end of our final online Sunday School for this term. I hope you've enjoyed the Sunday School as much as we have. And I do have to say a huge and massive thank you to everyone who's joined with us over the course of these last few weeks and months as we've had to do our online Sunday School because of COVID. As I said at the start, we're looking forward to hopefully getting back to the hall and we can gather together with our prizes and sweeties and all sorts of other things. And maybe even uh, in next year we'll manage to get a trip if we everything's back to normal. But thank you so much for joining with us. We really appreciate all the efforts of everybody who's joined in, who's made the crafts, who's sent us pictures and videos. It has been a great experience for us all and we're so thankful that you've joined with us. Hopefully, as I said, it will be after the summer holidays we'll actually see you, physically see you, and that would just be great. So from everybody in the Sunday School team, thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you after the summer holidays. I'm going to leave you with one last song and it's a song that we've all really, really enjoyed and it's another one all thinking about the, uh, the love of God and this one's called God Loves Me. Have a great summer holidays and hopefully see you then at Sunday School in the Hall. Take care. Bye.